So what are the words that dermatologists use to describe different types of lesions? Firstly, we have a macule, which is defined as a flat discoloration less than one centimeter. A common example would be tinea versicolor. Greater than one centimeter, we just change the name to a patch. So again, just a flat discoloration, but if it's greater than one centimeter, we call it a patch. Then if the lesion is raised, so it's no longer flat but raised, and it's less than one centimeter, we call it a papule. If this same lesion is greater than one centimeter, we just call it a plaque. So, so far we have macules and patches if they're flat, and then we have papules and plaques if they're elevated. And the difference is whether they're less than or greater than one centimeter in size. Common example of a papule would be acne vulgaris, and a common example of a plaque would be psoriasis. Next, we have vesicles which are essentially like papules, except that they're full of fluid. So it's like a small blister. And these vesicles are commonly seen in diseases such as chickenpox or herpes. Next, we have wheels, which are just transient vesicles. And so a hive, as seen in an allergic reaction, is a common example. Then we have bulla. And the bulla are a large fluid-containing blister. So think of it as a vesicle that's much larger than the one centimeter that we define a vesicle as. So large fluid-filled vesicle, if it's very large, is going to be called a bulla. Then we have keloid, getting an ear piercing, for example. You'll see a patient with a very large scar tissue formation at the lobe of the ear. And this is very common in African-American patients. Next, we have pustules, which are just pus-containing blisters. We have crust, which is defined as a dried exudate from a vesicle or a bulla. This is very commonly seen in chickenpox and also be seen in impetigo. And impetigo is going to be a streptococcal or staphylococcal infection of the skin that gets this sort of dry, honey-colored yellowness to it. And we define that as crust. Hyperkeratosis is defined as an increased thickness of the stratum corneum. So you can see this in a callus formation. Parakeratosis is defined as hyperkeratosis with retention of nuclei in the stratum corneum. As we said a few minutes ago, the stratum corneum usually does not have nuclei, so if it does, we call that parakeratosis, and that is very characteristic of psoriasis. Then there's acantholysis, and acantholysis is defined as a separation of epidermal cells from one another. So we're going to see this in pemphigus vulgaris, which we just discussed. Then there's acanthosis, which is an epidermal hyperplasia. So you get an increase in the number of cells in the spinosum layer of the epithelium. And lastly, dermatitis is simply defined as inflammation of the skin.